Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another one of those Hammock plug-in modules for the 8000 system. So this one is called HM8035. It's a 20 megahertz pulse generator and uh, it is absolutely fantastic. Very, very useful and uh, compact and uh, nice and m really modern. You can still use this today and there's great use for for a pulse generator for many, many things. The, yeah, we should probably just look at the specifications uh, for this unit. So we can see that it, um, it can uh, handle a frequency range from 2 Hertz to uh, 20 megahertz, a uh, pulse width from 20 nanoseconds to 200 milliseconds, and the rise time should be about 3 nanoseconds. We've got two outputs at the same time, and um, they can be positive or negative, or the, the voltage, one of them here it says positive. So this pulse is always positive, and this pulse here is always negative, but you can have an inverted pulse, and it's still variable, 2 or 5 volt ranges, and then you have a variable, and as I said, they're completely individual outputs, and we got a few really, really funny features of this unit. So we got the, the different, let's just look at the pulse range here. So this, what we've got here, is uh, sort of the pulse mode is disabled. So that means square wave output. And now you're using just the frequency setting, the different ranges, and then you have the variable. So set whatever frequency you want. And that, that is also a very good and useful mode as well. But then you can go into pulse mode. And in pulse mode, you have the variable here to adjust the width of your pulse. And um, there is a really funny thing, and that was this LED here. It says with bigger than period. So that there is, of course, due to the wide range of width and wide range of frequency. Obviously, you can go into a high frequency, but have a two, um, <laughs> two wide poles. I mean, if the pulse is too wide compared to your frequency, the pulse is not going to fit within the repeat frequency. And there is a chip, uh, some counters that uh, measures uh, the pulse width and the frequency and resets if uh, this is not, uh, if there is no time, and then it will turn on this LED, and then you know you have done something real bad. So I think we should try and uh, test this one and. Uh, do a little bit of uh, experiments with this one. Yeah, and it can drive um, everything here up to, is of course, 50 ohms output. Obviously, you need to have a, a 50 ohm system for this, and that is, of course, due to the very, very fast uh, rise times. Let's try and uh, play a little bit with this fantastic pulse generator. So, I connected my oscilloscope to the two outputs, and um, I am now in the slowest frequency and the slowest width, <laughs> the longest width, obviously, right? So that uh, gives me um, 238 milliseconds of pulse, and the repeat frequency is 1.1 hertz. And um, as you can see here on the dials, it goes faster and faster when I turn the dials to the right. And this is also how the fine or the variable works. So if we see here, when I move those, I move this real slow to the right, the repeat frequency goes faster and faster. And obviously, as you can see now, the um, delay between the pulses is a lot, a lot smaller compared to the length of my pulse. So I can, of course, try and make the pulse smaller. And then let's see what happens. 
it's of course now the same frequency, but now my pulse gets smaller and smaller. So this means we have a lot of margin to the specified, um, it was 2 hertz in the specifications. So let's try and crank this up, 2 clicks, 2 clicks. And then obviously I'm going to change the time base on my oscilloscope. So we can see what's going on here. This is more or less the same picture, but now it just goes a lot faster. And um, what I really wanted to show is what happens when my frequency, see here now it's much more live, my update uh, on the oscilloscope. So what happens when my repeat gets too fast? And oops, look at that. So that means my pulse has my pulse width. That is the one with the highest priority. You see, this wins and then it cranks over and again and again and again and again. And let's go back to the first instance, flip over. And if we look here, now we have a blinking LED. This is probably not that easy to see with all this light, but there is a blinking red LED here, and this indicates uh an error. Now we have adjusted this uh, wrong. So back to a legal <laughs> limit. So let's try something else. Let's go all the way to the maximum. Here we go. And then I will crank up the oscilloscope again. Now we can start to see the rise time and the fall time. I've uh, put it uh, on some uh, readout measures on the oscilloscope. And uh, we can, of course, go even faster than this. So we can take the pulse width all the way to minimum. And then we can take the repeat frequency all the way to maximum like that. And then let's zoom in some more. So this is the absolute maximum. So the width is 10 nanoseconds. We got a rise time and fall time of about 3.6 nanoseconds and the frequency is 22 megahertz. So that means it is able to go a little bit faster than uh, actually uh, specified. So that's uh, pretty good. We got margin. So let's play a little bit with the amplitude. So this is of course the negative. See here's the amplitude for the negative. There is also this little switch here and then we get a lot more and we can invert it Choop. so now that negative is inverted but look at that the inverted mode actually modify the pulse a little bit and that is of course not <laughs> intended let's uh, let's try and see the positive if this is exactly what happens so now this one is inverted and now my pulse, see, this is the pulse. So the pulse width is of course also modified. Yeah, here it is easy to see. So the inverter actually modifies. So that is more or less how this unit works when it comes to the operation. Let's look a little bit on the internal parts of this fantastic unit. So what we see here is the frequency dial, or the frequency switches, and that will be the variable for the frequency. I will of course show the schematic in a little while. I just want you to have a little pre look of what is going on here. So we got some digital chips, the oscillator, and we got some counters. All those counters down here. That will be 390s and there's another 390 here to select all the div uh, divisions because it's a factor of 10 each time you dial here, right? So this goes back and resets all this timer in here is of course the variable. So here's the pulse 
Again, we're going to switch and a variable for the pulse. And this one is a little bit more complex. We've got a lot of different gates and transistors involved in the timing settings around this. But there's one thing that bothers me a little bit. But I think I will uh, show that when I go through the schematics in a little while. And that will be the two output level potentiometers. And then we have the output amplifiers. They're right here. We got, it's of course impossible to see because we got heat sinks around these. I just want you to see that we got four transistors on each of them. And if I try and bend it somehow, maybe I can get a little bit of light in here. So we can see the transistors down here. Yes, oh yes. So see, they're cooled on the top, and then there's a little bit of, oh, I'm not able to show that, but there's isolation. And uh, through that isolation, we got those nylon screws. So all four transistors completely isolated, but of course connected a little bit thermally to those two heat sinks. I also found a little bit of a mechanical challenge here. That was this one. You can see the scratchy, scratchy marks right there. But I was able to bend this heatsink a little bit because it's actually sitting a little bit flexible on top of the transistors. So by moving this just a tiny, tiny little bit, now this shaft here is free and you don't have this annoying scratchy, scratchy sound. You can imagine dialing this one, it goes... <laughs> this uh, doesn't sound... Uh, so professional and uh, in this unit I, I mean throughout this unit we have tons of little um, <laughs> details with very very little margin see this little stick here so this is the manual trigger it's barely touching there as well look at the screws on the variable here we got the two Capacitors here, I think it's this is perfectly fine, but the other one here is this is also free. But is was it here? Yes, it's that one. Look here, we got another capacitor. See the blue one? This one just goes free, but that's just by luck. So if we move this capacitor a little bit, it will be free. It's just just the way it is in this uh, unit with the mechanical margins. So here is the schematic of the pulse uh, unit. In the bottom left or the bottom part, we see the dividers I was talking about and the switch for the different ranges. And in the very bottom left, we see the variable potentiometer to this re-trigger system and then it goes up to the top part and that is the pulse, pulse wide adjustment uh, and yeah it's generating a pulse. If we look at this switch where we can select the different uh, pulse width, the top switch is this square wave mode and this is a very important mode uh, if you want to uh, a failure check or repair a unit like this because if you go in this mode this entire pulse width system is now bypassed by this uh, gate we see those four AND gates uh, it looks like they're going in a little uh, round loop but it's uh, of course not the case it's uh, this little enable system that just passes the pulses directly to the output if it's in square wave mode and if it is not of course all the pulses from the pulse with system goes to the output instead. The last schematic I wanted to show is the output amplifier. It consists of two more or less identical amplifiers. Of course it's a positive amplifier um, made using PNP transistors and the negative output amplifiers made using NPN transistors. That's just the way they uh, wanted to, um, to make it. 
The fun thing is if we look at those amplifiers. So it's a, a cascaded a coupling using two transistors. So it's looking like they're in series, but this is a very, very good way to achieve very, very fast rise times. And then they have two of them in parallel, and that is a good way to get current. So uh, that uh, looks a little bit complicated, but that is definitely uh, how, you, uh, how you make those really fast uh, switch pulses. So let's look to the very left. Here is the signal from pulse generator, and it goes through um, an inverter. They made this inverter using a NAND gate. And then there, there is another inverter, and that will be the switches that selects positive and negative. It's inverting the output. And uh, like I showed in a previous clip, the output width actually is uh, affected by this inverted or non-inverted signal. Uh, that's of course because of the propagation delay of those inverters and also because it's not symmetric, the um, propagation delay. So that is uh, of course a little bit of a uh, problem, I would say. And then the output after this selector here goes again via two inverters. That is a little bit uh, funny, but I, I think this is just to, uh, to nice up the signal more locally to those transistors where you need the signal to be good and sharp. But did you see the design fault? They're doing this fault four times here. So this is really weird and all uh, digital designers would know this. And if you take an AND gate like they did here and parallel the two inputs, can you see what happens when if one of them goes on or off depending on the rise time, fall time symmetry inside those chips, you will have a pulse that is, of course, not uh, correct. And uh, that is why I always recommend pulling one of the inputs high constantly and then use the other uh, input. And uh, there you have your inverter. And now it's uh, not affected by the difference within uh, the NAND gate. So uh, definitely a uh, design uh, fault uh, here then. So please do not <laughs> copy this type of fault. I think that was all I wanted to show you about this uh, pulse generator from uh, Hammock. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye.